All right, guys. Welcome to Tucci's Rated. I finally made this page. It's a long time coming. I was waiting for a Drake drop because I know how important it is to the music culture for when he drops. Definitely a big Drake fan. The reason why I follow music now. I grabbed everything I could that I have of Drake. And the backdrop of Take Care, probably his best album, in my opinion. Everything on this channel, like I said, opinion, 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 opinion. It's my opinion. Not everyone's going to have the same thing. It's, it's my taste, my music taste. If you don't want to watch it, that's no problem. There's a million other channels. And I didn't think they were doing Drake justice. So I'm going to have my opinion out there. Uh, we got the OVOXO owl sweater that I haven't worn probably since like when they were relevant. When I was like eighth grade. Uh, they, meaning The Weeknd and Drake OVOXO. Um, and we'll get to why I'm wearing it too. I have the certified lover boy hat as well. And the last time Drake dropped, I guess do you want to consider Laugh Now or Cry Later? The last time he dropped or Dark Lane's demo tape? Um, Dark Lane's demo tape, obviously, the throwaways all pushed together. Wasn't like a serious thing. Was just really for the fans. You know, some people like to judge him on, on that. And some people actually liked Dark Lanes better than Scorpion. And being taking Drake's project so serious, and I guess even then I really wasn't impressed with Scorpion. But even now, I look back and it's just my biggest thing with music, and it's why I really don't like some of the newer rap projects. Um, I had much more like his R&B vibes, but I'm saying just in general, the rap scene um, playback value is huge. There's a lot of these hot songs that you can't go back and listen to because it's just it's like a stale flow. It doesn't doesn't draw you back. And with Scorpion, the playback value was, except for the hits. I mean, he did his thing with the hits, and really, I rate it on how he. This is only Drake could be rated like this: the rap part of it, the R&B part of it the hits, and the playback value, and then you have your overall score. And Scorpion was, honestly, and I hate to, on my first video, to talk negatively about Drake because I do think so positively about him. But for Scorpion, the rapping was, I mean, Survival was probably the worst intro he's he's ever made. And I, it's the first song of Drake that I couldn't download onto my phone because I just couldn't, it was just a stale flow. It just didn't bring me... It didn't draw me like his other intros did. So rap, the rap part, I gave it three. Um, <clears throat> the R and B, the R and B was the stronger side, and I gave that a seven point five. I think one of his best R and B songs ever is actually on there. It's Jaded. Um, the hits, like I said, he did his thing with the hits. I gave that a ten because some of his biggest hits were on this project. Uh, playback value, and that's where I think it struggled the most. Where I really didn't see myself going back like oh my god I have to listen to this I have to listen to this um besides the hits so you know what I mean like if you're at a party or like a pregame uh the hits were they always play they always play and they always get a reaction the uh, nice for what's the god's plans in my feelings you forget how many hits were on this but the playback value for this I gave a five and overall like just averaged up I, it was like around the six um probably the lowest I've ever given a Drake project with dark lanes um he, like I said, it was just some songs that were getting leaked. He put them all together and gave it out for the fans. I think that was, it was cool for him to do that. And I, and one of my, honestly, one of my favorite songs from him was on that. It's, it's funny. I find the little gems in these, even if I don't like a Drake project as a whole, I do find a gem and that was Time Flies. I think that's a, ironically enough, a timeless song. Um, and he did, he did exactly what he says he was going to do, which is like um, songs you could ride around in the car to at night. And that's a, that's a perfect song. If you listen to that song, maybe it's at night, it's freezing cold, snowing. Put that on, it's just the vibe is like insane. Even in the summer, I know that that was ringing off in the summer too. Um, and that's that. Some, my, one of, some of my favorite songs, like I said, Jaded on Scorpion. Um, and March 14th, I think, is another one that's a timeless song. Playback values was uh, high on that for me. And Lowe's, like I said, was Survival and Sandra's Rose. Uh, a lot of the rap songs were, like I said, just like a stale flow. It's just why why change the flow you had? I, I watch the interviews. I understand that people are going to get sick of it. But literally, nobody was sick of it. Like, wait till we get sick of it to change it. I know you want to be ahead of the curve, but I just feel like the way he was rapping in 09 to like 14, like why why change that flow, whatever. 
But uh, and, and another thing is everyone wants him to bring back his comeback season type of flow. And I agree with that. Like, bring it back because that's literally – I'm not like the – big like, for me personally, I'm not the biggest, like, rap fan bar for bar, like, type of rap. But when he was rapping on comeback season, I literally – I enjoyed it. He he made it sound good. If you can make like just straight bars and rap sound good or paint a picture, I think that's what draws the audience in, and that's definitely what it was. And uh, since I'm talking, we'll get to Certified Lover Boy in a second. But just to get a gist of what I like to listen to um, over his career, just some songs I want to listen to because I really can't make a top, like a top five or even a top ten. But these are like my favorites from Drake, and it's best I ever had. And by the way, I go off of also. I go off of, can another artist make either this song better or something like this? And for me, no, in any of these. Um, best I ever had, obviously. Classic. No one can make a song like that. That's the reason why I started listening to him, because he, sa- he didn't sound like anyone else that was making music. Come Through. Another one, Feel No Ways. Um, like I said, Time Flies. Another one where it's like, it's a timeless song. Um... I guess some are more rap cuts that don't feel like rap. It just feels like he's like painting a picture and telling a story. And it's like you feel it and it's like it, it brings your emotions out. Look What You've Done is one of my favorite rap songs by Drake. Another one that people don't really talk about is Come Winter on Room for Improvement, his first mixtape. And one from Comeback Season, Barry Bonds Freestyle, which I think is sick. I think that um, just the hype that, that I get out of that. I, Barry Bonds Freestyle is awesome. Okay, and now that I've talked about um, how I'm big on playback value and staying power and going back to a song, I want to bring up his most recent um, release, at least from him, not a leak, Laugh Now, Cry Later. Originally, I, I was with a bunch of friends when this first dropped, and we were like, really good song, you know, but we expected a little more. Now, with all the delays on the album, you know what I mean, the video having time, time to adjust a song, playing on the radio a million times. I honestly, I'm very impressed with how this aged. It's a, it's a definitely a song that I would play, that has playback value. I gave it a nine on the playback value. It was seven overall with the, sing, with the song and the melody and even Lil Dirk's verse. Regarding Certified Lover Boy, before the drop obviously there were leaks if you if you're following anything drake or even music related you know there were leaks you might not know all of them but you may know some of them and one of them that he confirmed will be on the album just it's not the finished product is not around which if we're getting that type of sound from drake it's going to be a classic um another one that's one of my favorites is called intoxicated it got leaked the hook a verse and i think a hook again but there was like a you know, time for the beat to run. And from what I've read, I think Chris Brown's going to be on the second half of that. But also another thing where I don't know if that's going to be on Certified Lover Boy. Another song, Need Me, which is, like, it blows, it's funny how it blows most of the songs on Scorpion away and it blows most of the songs on Dark Lane demo tape away, but it's a leak. It's it's so weird. And he did that in another one that's not going to make the album because I think it's from More Life. It's Vital. I think Vital is one of his, one of his best songs in the recent years. Vital would be a amazing intro and apparently he didn't put it on more life which i think vital is better than the one he started more life with and then we had lucky left lucky lefty leaked and he uses a flow from comeback season i towards the second half of it uh, like that free flowing rap style i really like lucky lefty uh in the cut with roddy rich um great song i don't think that's making the album but it's a good Lucy. Maybe Roddy puts it on his album. Another thing was uh, Drake was spotted in Bahamas with Meek Mill and uh, Lil Baby. I don't think that was for Drake's album. I could be wrong. I, like this, like I said, this is all just my opinion on everything. I don't think that's for Drake's album. I think that's for Meek Mill's album because I think Meek Mill was supposed to have an album come out in uh, December 2020. And it didn't, obviously, so he's still working on it. Um, per, like I said, an opinion... I think he's going to leave the rap features to a minimum on the album because especially look at Left Now Cry Later, Little Dirk's verse was short. I don't think – and I really think that was for the whole Kanye diss thing because Little Dirk's from Chicago and half the song is about um, Kanye. Look into that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Most people probably know what I'm talking about. 
Um, so I don't even know if Laugh Now, Cry Later is in the album track list now with all the time that has passed. Maybe it'll be a bonus probably because of all the radio play it had. They'll put it on as like a maybe like the last track or a bonus or whatever. Now let's get into what to expect from Certified Lover Boy. Um, I think he's going to do his best to go back to that comeback season type of rap when he does rap. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of reflecting from the past. You saw with the uh, with the album trailer how he did his his uh, past album covers reenacted. I think he he was trying to explain that's where he's trying to go with it. That's what he's going to either sound like or talk about similar things that were in those albums. Um, so uh, it's going to be a lot of reflecting, I think, and of course it's going to be how it is to be pretty much at the top. He's going to talk a lot about it all the struggles of being on the top, and obviously all the achievements. So some features that I think we could be getting, again, this is my opinion. OVO and XO, he said it in his, in the last interview he did, he said that that is still happening, and look, he says a lot of shit that it doesn't come to fruition, but I have faith in this actually happening. He, and if it doesn't, then I expect something from them at some point, maybe a project. I think there is going to be a weekend feature. That's probably the most probable. Another highly probable is Chris Brown. Now, he did confirm that on his last interview that Chris Brown was going to be on a song. But look, things could not work out. He could take it off the track list, whatever. So I'm thinking Chris Brown, The weekend are locks. Now, venturing off of Chris Brown being very close to Trey Songs and Trey Songs having that connection to Drake early on in his career. I know they were trying to re rebuild that friendship. I don't know what happened in between. Um, obviously, Drake mentioned him and nothing was the same. But I that could be the sneaky little feature because, like I said, Chris Brown and Trey Songs were tight. That could be a thing. He could pop up on here. But since Trey Songs really isn't as big as he used to be, maybe not. I don't know. Just a thought. These are just thoughts. Um, and... Another predictable party next door, obviously. He, he'll probably, and Magic Jordan will probably be writing some type of R&B for him, which obviously I don't think anyone would complain about. They're great writers. Whatever they do, they work together, write, whatever. Usually comes out to be a really good song. I don't know if it's a little bit of a dark horse. If he wants to put that rap melody type of feel into it, Lil, Lil TJ would be an option. Lil Wayne could pop up on this. You know, Wayne's obviously in the studio, always recording. Uh, I think people would like that nostalgia factor. Hopefully Drake does right by it. I mean, the BB King freestyle was pretty much all Drake. I know, I know did, Lil Wayne did his thing, but it was like, like, I, like I've been saying in the whole video, playback value. I'm, I feel like I'm never going back to that song. Um, and it's been the past couple Lil Wayne Drake songs. I, the only one I went back to of Lil Wayne Drake, have, probably believe me. And Drake was like three-fourths of the track. So maybe they could capture something, a little nostalgia, hopefully, you know, with the right producer, taking care of it, um, we'll get something good out of Lil Wayne Drake one more time, you know? And I think I want to just mention two Dark Horses, Dark Horse features on this album. And there were rumors that it was going to be with him, the lead single, instead of Laugh Now, Cry Later. They said there was going to be a song with Bruno Mars. Now, that would, I think, sort of going with the whole certified lover boy thing, that would hit great. He's never collaborated with him. Uh, who would be better than Certified Lover Boy? Bruno Mars. Um, whether it's like a dance type of song or slow, I'd have to say it's more like a, a dance pop song. It would That's what it would have to be. Um, and then probably the biggest, biggest dark horse here, but wouldn't be a surprise because they have made their friendship public, would be an Adele feature. I don't know how that would sound. No clue. Um... Would love to hear how it would sound. I'm sure it would be something crazy. Uh, it would easily go number one no matter what. No matter what the, the whole album sounds like, that would be number one just because of the fan base and um, star power in that song. So Adele, Bruno Mars, some Dark Horses, The Weeknd. I really think The Weeknd's going to be on this. Um, Chris Brown, I think, is going to be on this. Another Dark Horse, Trey Songs. Lil TJ, Lil Wayne, maybe. And then, like I said, Party Next Door, Majid Jordan. If that's even how you say their name, um, probably writing or part of next door probably have a feature. He'll get his credit um, there. And through the rap songs, I think we want I think we want Drake to rap how he did on Take Care. I think that's what we want. Um, 
over my dead body, underground kings, look what you've done. You know what I mean? Even though song didn't make the cup, it was in that era, Club Paradise, where he's just, he paints this picture and the flow doesn't stop. It's not, it's not the nonstop with the flow where it's just, it's just continuous. It's smooth. He, um, he makes his voice the focal point when it's literally rap. Like it's the words should really be what's hitting, but it's his voice and the words hitting. I don't know, but it seems like he's also cut off the whole, um, dance hall from his catalog. I know there are a couple leaks with that type of vibe, but I think I'm going to say he's done with it. Another thing that he gets shitted on was for more life, but I don't understand more life. I feel like was better than Scorpion bark better than dark lanes. I think more life aged so well. One of, I should have added that to the list. Do not disturb. One of my favorite rap songs from Drake. Um, and it, I mean, it's getting credit as time goes on, but still, like, it's crazy how hated he was, or hated he is, every time he first drops an album. People say it's trash. I don't get it. But, um, obviously high expectations. Also, the album cover hasn't leaked. I just, this all is just, to me, and you see pictures of him, like, not, I don't know if it's not smiling or, um, I don't know. The internet just has, like, I feel like, completely like changed him and he doesn't every every movie makes now is just going to be precise because he I feel like he's really scared of being judged it's sad because he's on top he should realize that none of it matters because he's the music is literally talking for him but yeah I, I, he can't miss on this one he really can't if you're going to be well he already is I think he is a legend but if you really want to ascend to the next level and he, you know what you know what I hated about the anticipation I hate that he said already People are going to hate on CLB because it's music to grow to. What do you mean? What do you, why can't, why, why? Why say, are you just trying to lower the expectations already? Like, why do you think it's going to be so bad, badly received, I mean? Like, I just don't get that. I don't get that at all. Why can't you have a little confidence? And just some final thoughts um, before this drops, because it could drop at any second. And I'm glad I got this in before it dropped. Um... My full expectations are for this to be, and I don't, I'm not saying that right away when it drops, classic, classic, classic. I think this will be right up there with nothing was the same and take care. Reason why is because he's had so much downtime between obviously COVID and I know he hurt his knee or something, whether it was tearing his ACL or whatever happened to his knee, he was Whenever he is sitting and not busy doing whatever business ventures and he's just focusing on the music, which he had so more time ever to do, I'm telling you, this is going to be, I think the expectations will be fulfilled in time. So I guess I'm sort of conflicting with what he said, like it's music to grow to, but I think, I really think he's going to do something with this. I hope he does. Again, album artwork not out. I'm sure he just doesn't want to release it because he's going to get criticized. So he might just release the album artwork with the actual project. You know what I mean? It's just that social media is a dark place right now. It's not, and clearly he doesn't want to be judged. But eventually it has to come out at some point, and he keeps holding it back. But I think it's going to be great music, great music to, to make memories to, like he says, drive around nighttime to. And I'm really excited for this. I'm excited for the next era of Drake. Everybody keeps saying, oh, Drake era's over. Drake, like, it's not over. Like, no one could sound like him. You know what I mean? It's never going to be over until he's gone. And then there was another thing. Funk Flex came on and said he, in 2009, when he freestyled on his radio station, that he had someone else write it for him because he knew the lyrics before they practiced without the Blackberry that he was using. I mean, like, what? Like, anything to take him down. So, so all right. I'm an upcoming rapper, right? And I get I'm on this one of the hottest radio stations at the time, 2009 Hot 97. First of all, yes, the freestyle that I'm gonna rap is going to be memorized in my head for sure. I could I need to I can't flop. Why would I Why would I try to go off the dome when I know I can't? You know what I mean? Why have that security blanket of knowing what you're gonna rap? So they practice it. He gets it down without looking at the BlackBerry, right? That I'm sure he wrote on his own. 
gets it down. All right, phone flex saw it. Cool. That we'll ride with this. Let's go. Now we go live. Why wouldn't I put my phone there? Why wouldn't I put my phone there in case I mess up on the biggest stage in New York City? It's a kid from Toronto. Why would I not have that backup, that security blanket? I don't understand. Like, you know what I mean? It's just people keep trying to go for them. This is why we don't get anything from them. Um, the leaks, I, I don't know how they're getting leaked, but is it him? I don't know. But I feel like this is why we don't get a lot from Drake because it's so criticized. And I wish he wouldn't care about the criticism. He tries to sh like joke, make jokes about himself and stuff and try to deflect, but it could be a pop project. It could be an R&B project. It could be him struggling with this whole being judged thing. Um, but time will tell. I think this video is long enough, and I guess I'll do a first reaction listen to it to the next video. I could also have my thoughts on his past projects if you guys want. But this is Two Cheese Rated. I'm gonna probably be rating food on this channel too. Um, and yes, that's it. I have two podcasts. I'll put them in the bio. They're not music related, but might as well throw them in there. So that's that. CLB coming soon. Peace.